A lager stadt is what you get when you have fossils that are preserved really, really well. This is things like the Solenhofen limestone that has Archaeopteryx. Except now there's a new lager stadt that's from about 250.8 million years ago, and it shows the first really modern community in the oceans. Now again, these are 250.8 million years old. It's not modern fossils, just a modern assemblage of groups that were there. And this is actually really unique, because just before this, there was the Permian-Triassic extinction. And a lot of life in the oceans, potentially as much as 95% of it, died off during that extinction. And so, first of all, this new find helps to show like, hey, life rebounded from that really, really quickly. It wasn't, you know, this kind of slower, more involved process. It's just like, nah, at least in some places, they just kind of all popped back at once. But it's also important because of that change. Before this extinction, you had a different set of organisms that were making up most of the environments. You still had things like coral, but they were rugose coral and tabulate corals, which went extinct. And then we start finding modern scleractinian corals in the fossil record. Before this extinction, you have things like brachiopods instead of bivalves being the main filter feeders in these environments. There's a lot of these changes across the entire ecosystem in the oceans at the Permian Triassic. And it was thought that this change was kind of slow after the extinction, not as quickly as it's shown here. And actually, this figure from the paper shows it really well. You'd start in the Griesbachian and Denarian, and those are going to be the earliest stages of the Triassic. And it's thought to be really, really basic kind of life, just primary producers mostly. So things that are just photosynthesizing. And then into the Smithian and Spothian, you start getting diversification of herbivores and some pretty basic trophic levels with some animals feeding on those herbivores. And then you move on to the Anesian and you start getting the more complex apex predators. These kinds of really, really complex interactions between different animals that we think of when we're thinking of a modern healthy environment. But because of what this new Lagerstadt shows, yeah, no, they just kind of all bounced back all at once. <laughs> so. It's not necessarily this kind of slow progression that we were thinking of. And this pattern could have been found for a few different reasons. The first is that this area of China was some sort of refuge that was more or less sheltered from the effects of that extinction. So a lot of the diversity that it had before the extinction just survived through. And again, there would have been some changes to it because again, this is a more modern type community. But again, if it was more sheltered, there could have been more diversity living in this area rather than other areas. And then as the extinction conditions subsided, it spread from here and probably a few other refuges across the rest of the planet. An alternative is maybe these kinds of groups did actually survive at a much larger scale than we thought, but the reason we don't find them in other Triassic rocks is maybe there's a preservational bias. For example, there's some things like some brachiopods and even some fish. Maybe those brachiopods and fish and even bivalves and things just aren't preserved as well at other sites. So at those other sites, maybe we're just getting a small part of the picture that was happening there. Whereas at this one, we're getting more of a whole picture. There's a lot of questions that need to be asked as this kind of find does kind of overturn what we thought we knew about the Permian Triassic. And we know it was a devastating extinction. We still need to study it a lot more though.